Recently on TikTok, I did a video about ultra processed foods and some research that was published about it and how people who are eating a diet really high in ultra processed foods actually end up eating more calories per day than individuals who are eating a diet with non-processed foods. So this research study was done in 2018 and it was by Kevin Hall. Now Kevin Hall is a guy who works at NIH and what's really cool about his research is that he uses a metabolic chamber in order to figure out people's resting metabolic rates so that he can really control every variable. Now a metabolic chamber, how that works is you sit in a room for 24 hours so that they can get a really good accurate picture of what you're resting or really not resting because you're there for 24 hours but what your just metabolic rate is so Kevin Hall uses this with his study participants so again he can control every variable now in this particular study it was a small study it was only with 20 individuals but the reason it was a small study is because he actually admitted these 20 individuals to the hospital so again he could control every variable as it pertained to their food now what he did is actually feed half of the group an ultra processed diet and feed the other half of the group a non-processed diet. And I'm just gonna read a little bit to you because I think it's important to note um, dietitians scrupulously matched the ultra processed and processed meals. So what they did is they made sure that both diets, regardless of whether or not whether or not it was the ultra processed foods or non-processed foods, were identical in calories energy density, fat, carbohydrate, protein, sugars, sodium, and fiber. They also actually made sure that the research study participants didn't have any like taste preference for one food versus the other. And the reason they did that is because how the study actually worked is they fed these individuals, for example, the ultra processed food diet, they would give them all ultra processed food and then they would give the other people the all non processed food. And it was the exact same calorically dense meal but the participants had the option to ask for more food if they wanted it. And what they found is that the individuals on the ultra processed diet actually ended up eating 500 calories more per day and gained weight at the end of the study as compared to the non-processed group. And the reason that is, is because actually when you're eating these ultra processed foods, what it can do is make you not be in touch with those hunger and fullness cues. What it's doing internally is actually impacting the two hormones that impact your hunger and fullness, which are ghrelin, which tells you when you're hungry, and leptin, which tells you when you're full. And so essentially what's happening is you're eating these foods, your body isn't registering the appropriate, the appropriate caloric density of the food, and it makes you think that you're still hungry, even though you're not, and that has to do with everything that goes into these ultra-processed foods. Now, just to address this question, the, some of the foods that were on these diets were as follows. So on the ultra processed food diet, it said it was things like processed cheeses, ravioli, hot dogs, margarine, packaged cookies, um, turkey bacon, sugared cereals, egg substitutes, etc. Some of the examples of stuff that was on the non-processed diet were things like roast beef, rice pilaf, pasta, breakfast with nuts, uh, veggie omelets, using like real oil, stuff like that. So those were the difference between the two diets. Now, what I didn't get to address, I guess, when I, when I was talking about this on TikTok, was how they did a little bit more research into why eating ultra processed foods actually impacts your leptin and ghrelin and makes you think that you're still hungry when you're actually not. So who kind of did this follow-up study with someone, her name is Dana Small, and she's a researcher at Yale University. And so, I'm gonna read some of the stuff to you because frankly, I didn't wanna memorize all of it. <laughs> um, but what she figured out is there's actually a disconnect between the gut and the brain. And that's why when you're eating these ultra processed foods, you think that you're still hungry. So she says there's a nerve, cell, nerve cells in the gut send signals to our brains via a large conduit called the vagus nerve. Those signals include information about the amount of energy or calories, of course, com coming into the stomach and intestines. If information is scrambled, the mixed signal can result in overeating. So again, there's this disconnect between the gut and the brain. So it says, if the brain does not get the proper metabolic signal from the gut, the brain doesn't really even know that food is there. So then she goes on to talk about an example, which I think is gonna be helpful for you guys to understand. So it said, for example, natural sweeteners, such as honey, maple syrup, table sugar, etc., provide a certain number of calories and the anticipation of sweet taste 
prompted by these foods, signals the body to expect and prepare for a particular calorie load. So basically, when you're eating something, there's a certain sweetness or palatability of that food or whatever food it might be, and that triggers your brain to be like, okay, we're expecting X amount of calories from this food, right? But artificial sweeteners such as saccharin offer the anticipation and experience of the sweet taste without that energy boost. So then the brain, which had anticipated the calories, now senses something is missing and encourages us to keep eating. So super interesting. Now, one thing I wanna point out about this is this is not to say that you can never eat processed food and that you should only eat non-processed food. I know that that's not necessarily feasible in some families. All this was pointing out is when you're eating a diet that is primarily, if not all, ultra-processed food, it is going to signal you to potentially overeat, and as a result, you could gain weight. So it is best to try and get as much non-processed food in your diet as possible, but of course there's room for other things too. We never want you to be super strict and feel like, like you can't eat foods. We don't think any foods are off limits, but I thought this was a really interesting study to address because again, it was really cool to see how your gut and your brain are connected when you eat food.